Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave the Cyber Guy. I'm here with Andrew the Security Guy. What's up? Let's talk up your new show. Let's Welcome, do it. brother. Thank you. All sir. right. Security Matters comes on three hours before the show on Fridays. Ten o'clock. All right, man. What do you what did you talk about this last week? Ramp us Retail up. security. So we went behind the browser, you know, all the stuff that's going on behind that little website when you're on there shopping. Hey, what did you call it? Who's shopping who? Uh, who's shopping whom? Who's shopping whom? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little scary, right? people yeah. tracking you. And uh, and this has been going on. I, I remember I was in the, the web business uh, doing websites uh, for a place called Home Store mm. back in the 90s. And uh, this was big. We realized that people had behavioral patterns, just like in a brick and mortar store, right? And if we tracked them, we could present them with ads and options that suited their lifestyle or their choice patterns, right? And that became a big thing, and Microsoft just pounced on this. They yeah. came out with a whole engine for this. By about 2001, they dominated the market. And just everybody's gone with this trend. And now Amazon, Home Depot, everybody's got trending. They want to know what Business your behavior is. Right. Based yeah. on this, we think you need that. Yeah. And um, that, that kind of observation is kind of what leads us into today's Mm -hmm. Subject matter, oh, right? Well. But congratulations on your new show, Thank Security you. Matters. Thank you. Uh, everybody go out there and watch it. Thank you. It's going to be Come uh, see. awesome every week, right? Friday's at 10. Man, I don't know why you signed up for every week. You know the challenge. Every week. It's, that's well, a lot of work. We've been doing it for a while, so you know, <laughs> we might right. as well. So that's right. We have, is, I'm the second spinoff from Hibachi Talk. I, I feel like Cyber Underground was the first spinoff. Uh, Hibachi Talk and Gordon, I feel like that, that's uh, John Stewart. In the Daily Show, and yeah. we're like Colbert and Oliver. We are right. Yeah, you're Colbert. I can I be am. Oliver. I've got the cushy. <laughs> oh my God. HBO. <laughs> yeah, but we're spit offs, right? Uh, let's let's talk about something that that uh, just came to light. Now this this started when I was a kid in the Bay Area. I was okay. an East Bay kid. I, I was an uh, Oakland kid. A's and Raiders and the uh, Golden State Warriors. Yeah, by the blue. Right. Um, so this started happening. There's a, a serial killer out there, the Golden State Killer, right? And this went on for 40 years. Is that what they called him the back Golden, then? Golden State Killer. Well, like, he got that name three or four murders in, you know, wow. after they knew it. it was, all these things that were happening were similar. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the modus operandi or MO was pretty much the same. And they said, this has got to be the same guy over and over again. And he actually, this is strange, uh, I moved from the East Bay as a kid down to Southern California. And the murders went that way Did as you get well. dead or, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. It was just a coincidence. But uh, when I came Scary. out here, and, uh, the, you know, there's this, uh, a guy named Patton Oswalt, for this comedian, actor. Okay. His wife was a fanatic for this case and wrote a oh. book on this. Okay. And she was, she was just positive she'd found the right leads and she'd got all the right information. Really? And she died in 2016. Her husband, Patton Oswalt, carried on the torch and actually published the book. And right after that, this happens. We just found out. Was did she have him, or was this the guy? I think this was the guy. So I don't think. Oh, you they, think from they, her homework? From her homework was part of the evidence collecting, uh -oh. right? So let's let's talk about what happened. They they caught a guy that they they think is the Golden State Killer. Seventy two seventy two years old. Well, they matched his DNA to a bunch of sites. So here's the problem, right? They used publicly available DNA matching on commercially available DNA sites. They won't tell which one, and 23andMe, Ancestry.com, and a bunch of others said, no, 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 it's not us. But there's only so many of these sites available, okay. right? And what they do is they take the preponderance of evidence based on your DNA, and they match you with other DNA markers, and they say, this could probably be your fifth cousin, this is probably your second cousin, here's probably someone who might even be a sibling. And uh, what, it, okay. what looks like it happened, uh, they took genetic material that they collected, they think was DNA evidence at a crime scene, and they probably sent it off to a place like Ancestry or 23andMe and said that was them, and they built a phony profile. Okay. And oh, do you have to? I've never done it, so you have to. You got to like, send away your person. DNA. You have to give like a social security number or something. No, nope, don't have to do that. Uh, but so you, you can a, do it as a fake person. You can do it as a fake person, and they probably just built a fake profile and they found all the matches. So that so site. All the similar, all the similar people. Right. So they they got here's probably your third cousin, here's probably your second cousin, and they started matching people and started narrowing mm. the area where yeah. this person might be, and, and they could interview they those be. people, and they could research those people and find those connections, and then they took the timeline of all the murders, 
all the patterns that mm -hmm. they observe, probably Mrs. Oswald's book. And all that evidence together led them to a guy, and as you were saying before we were talking, they probably uh, took that to a judge and said, we think this is the guy, we'd like to collect some DNA. That would be the proper way to do it. And then they matched that DNA to the sample they got, and they think they got their guy. And so wow. the genetic sites are now involuntarily participating in solving crimes. Good parts and bad parts to that. We should discuss this. You, you took the side that, that it's obvious. It's good to catch criminals. It's, it's really amazing to me that they were sort of um, that diligent in their investigation. Like, that's fairly creative. So, what, I mean, just off the top of my head, I keep thinking of how we had the, the gamers, talking about gamers being hackers. Right. And I think we must have in that the, the department that was working on this some young, savvy, perhaps gamers who grew up in a different thought, generation, yeah. thought about investigation differently, yeah. would use an online tool like, you know, Ancestry or something and said, well, we could, we could find that information out, P put it in as an avatar, an, an alias, right? Because when you're online in those games, you're an alien. They don't care about killing all the stuff in the game because it doesn't matter. Right. Send that it up. That's probably what happened. They probably have um, some. This started when in uh, shoe leather and notebooks. Era for, for yeah, cops. there wasn't yeah, Dean. It was 70s. Tough. I mean, I can't yeah. imagine. It's amazing that this guy, if this is is the guy, whatever guy it was, did this. And they, I was just reading a, a report that said that uh, it's unlikely actually that he stopped in '86. That so we might find more. Gonna, they, they, they want to go look at a, other unsolved with where there's DNA available evidence and see what else they've got because they they just don't think he would quit. That's amazing. I, I love What's that they caught the guy. With people? I, I, I couldn't tell you. What's what? wrong with people? I, What's wrong with I, this I don't know guy? what the what genetic is mix is here. Why <laughs> way we get these people. But or, that's uh, the what concern makes them, that you yeah. have, which was interesting, because I hadn't thought about it. I'm like, well, it's good if we use that type of research or whatever to catch a guy like him. But your point was, what if, first of all, we don't know. I mean, I'm guessing that we do know that it's super unique, but there could be somebody else. Or we could have flawed science. Remember, the Earth used to be flat. There's things that we it's not what, flat. We, I don't think so. When they, did that happen? Well, there's this. They found a way to triangulate it off the planets and stuff. It looks like it's round. You mean those pictures are not? That's not fake news. <laughs> oh. And so the. <laughs> so the. <laughs> well, you've seen pictures. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, so maybe it's, so anyway, but I, I've always said that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always concerned that our microscope's not strong enough. Microscope isn't strong enough yet. Mm. So, so science has, science can be flawed. It's been shown to be over time, as, as we learn more about science, that, wow, this thing we used to think we is, we don't think that anymore. Right. So maybe, the, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to definitively say, but by what we know today, this guy pretty much looks like the guy, at least for those 10 that he's matched to. We're probably going to so. match him, and you're right. Uh, if you go back to uh, the you know the turn of the 20th century, the Royal Society of London, which is uh, you know Isaac Newton was part of it, Stephen Hawking was part of it. They Were actually said, "What? Were you there? No, I wasn't there. <laughs> I'm not that smart. I, I I don't get to be in that crowd." But uh, they they oh, actually came up with this, a statement in the early part of the 20th century that said uh, the human beings cannot go over 55 miles an hour because their their innards would would turn to mush. Nobody figured out the physics of, if you get to 55, your innards are going 55 at the same time, so you're not going to turn to mush. So oh. that was their theory, right? They I also that's said, how they came up with the speed limit. Okay, never well, mind. I wasn't tracking with your conversation. Huh? <laughs> they also said, uh, the, the same society said everything, and it's around the same time, everything that's worth discovering has been discovered. <laughs> and we hadn't even, we uh, hadn't even, a uh, short there, was, there was no cars and no planes at the time. So since then, I mean, uh, people have said, we'll never break the sound barrier. Of course we did. Of course you know, we did. Of course Chuck Yeager knocked that out of the park. We're going to Mars. And we're, we're going to go to Mars. Don't know if we're going to live, but we'll go to Mars. We'll put people there. At least they'll be there. Maybe we should send this guy. <laughs> Make him a test monkey. What? There's this. nobody up there to kill yet. You know, let's go see what he's got. Right. You know, that's not a bad idea. So instead of... Well, maybe would you rather be locked in prison the rest of your life or just go on up there? Tell, you, tell us what you got. Die of radiation saturation? Think. Okay. That might be good. Maybe I could be put it on TV. I mean, <laughs> I, I, um, I, I do, I, I do, I'm sensitive to this profile and idea we that we talked about, right? So this, this idea that, 
So he's found because of the profile of his DNA matches this profile of the other DNA. Yeah, so yeah. what you were talking about was a little scarier. Like, okay, what if, if you know, if we're if we're allowed to do that publicly, what if I just decide as a judge of some courtroom to just go to Ancestry.com and say, you know what, give me everybody with this profile with this little certain marker or characteristic or criteria, and let's just say we're going to charge them more taxes. You could. Uh, it was on the I bill mean, of the House that the U.S. House uh, Congress, um, the House of Representatives, actually entertained a bill last year that stated you, that an employer could request your DNA sample, and based on the genetic markers that put you at a higher risk for medical care, they could charge you more for your medical insurance. Well, that's just wrong. Well, I mean, uh, it's I, actually like from a finance perspective, it might be a, it might be a the correct thing, but just because you have the marker doesn't mean you're going to get this. Right, sickness. there's other that things correct? that activate genes. Yeah, they can, they so, can lie dormant so for years not or work. not be activated. And, and in this case, I mean, you mm -hmm. could argue both sides, right? The, the company doesn't want to spend more on somebody who is prone to being ill all the time. They're going to put more money out there. So the insurance okay. company probably wants to save more money. Um, on the other hand, and you brought this up, it's a great point. What if medical insurance uh, providers, hospitals, uh, healthcare, could say, give us your genetic profile. Based on this, we're going to tailor your medical care to your genetic profile. That would actually, I think, save that company money. Yeah, because it could be that you shouldn't eat apples or well, you know, whatever it might be. So right. they, they may know some things that trigger or turn on that that mutation or that gene that's or keep going it off. That's going or things that keep it off yeah. if you do this. So or more likely to. So and again, I. I just don't know if we know enough about genomic science yet to, to do this predictive sort of stuff with it, right? So I just don't know. I think we could do some good. Um, the thing we could, I think diabetes comes to mind. Ah. You, the, a lot of people have the genetic marker that says you're more prone to this disease. And if we, we, right? if we were aware of that in children, we could say, hey, parents, limit this diet for this child and steer away from foods that could drive you into type 2 diabetes. I see. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, could be, that would be great. That would be great. Because sure. now we're having kids with diabetes at an astronomical rate. Is that right? Yeah, it, it's, it has to do with a lot of the things we eat. It's, you're prone to it, and then you saturate oh, then yourself you, with it. Sugar. And of course. Because we have the a same sugary diet. People are prone to alcoholism. That's a genetic marker. Is that true? But if you never have alcohol, you can't become an alcoholic. If you have some self-discipline, you can't become. So does that have? If you have the gene and you drink, it turns it on. So if you, you have the gene quit? and you drink too much, you have a tendency to have the addictive profile of an alcoholic. I see. The same thing with a lot of drug use. Not meth. That's not altered. meth. Meth. Meth There's is. There's no gene for meth. No, you you take it and you're <laughs> addicted from the first dose. Ouch. And the first time you try it, you're addicted from then on. It alters your brain chemistry. Don't so that's play different. with that stuff, kids. But there's good parts and bad parts. So. Uh, you know, I would actually think, okay, another $100 a month, and now the doctor's no longer guessing. He knows what I should be steering towards. Well, it seems to me they might, right? might be 100 bucks less because I'm not going to, if I follow the that prescription. That would be nice. Now, uh, imagine telling a bunch of kids, you can't have any ice cream, you can't have any ca candy canes <laughs> for Christmas. You can't. Right, right. So, but the trick's to limit it. We're not talking about, you know, maybe zero. I don't not really abstinence, know. but limiting. Yeah, because I mean, I guess, I'm just going to, I'm going to guess that if you, a gene is either off or on. So, you know, how do you, not how, do you, so I don't how know, do you yeah. know you can have one candy cane but not 40? Now, no one should have 40 candy canes. But, this, this again, can also, so I don't know. There's, you know, a, there's some bad parts of this. So, so if uh, people genetically profile their unborn children and they find out there's a good chance this child could be autistic. Mm-hmm. Now, would they, they might terminate the pregnancy. They might terminate the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that could have been the next Stephen Hawking. Their choice, but yeah. that could be a bad thing or could be a good thing based on the, pro, the, the viewpoint you're coming in from. Sure. I, you know, I could see both sides, sure. but that's a dangerous slope. What if we had... Uh, I thought they'd do stuff like that. Uh, well, one of our staff members here, who was kind enough to bring this up, what if we, had, we knew what the evil, quote-unquote, gene was? That's the one that you have. Uh, that's the one... <laughs> Then we could terminate no. all those pregnancies, but we don't know if that evil gene is going to manifest yeah, itself, yeah. right? Because so, it may not be on. So we could kill a whole bunch of so people you're, and not know. you're Dr. Jekyll until you're Mr. Hyde, or vice versa. I think I that's the way the it always is, right? I don't have that gene, <laughs> man. I don't know. There's, there's more things to discuss, and we can, go, we can go into the conspiracy theories. Let's do that right after the break. Awesome. We're going to take a minute and come right back. We're going to pay some bills. Until then, stay safe. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back. We're discussing conspiracy theories here at the Cyber no, Underground. No, we're not. We're talking about <laughs> genomics, man. I, I love conspiracy it. Conspiracy theories. So, okay. so we reviewed that. We, 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 we think we caught the Golden State Killer. It looks like this guy's genetic material matches the genetic material on 10 of the murder victims. That's... That's an amazing. That's pretty substantial. That's substantial. If he did 10, he probably did the rest. That's, that's probably going to be hard to argue in court, right? I, I think I think isn't isn't DNA materials now in sound evidentiary basis and well like, for no. a couple of decades now yeah so, since the so late he's 90s done. so yeah. he's the guy yeah we started uh, using DNA as actual profiling tools uh, for cases back in the mid 80s and it, it really matured into the mid 90s mm -hmm. and by the 2000s it was it was widely accepted as it'd positive. be good to submit your own DNA to see if you've done any crimes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been that drunk. But. Vol vol volunteer your stuff to see if you match with any, you know, is there, like, Matt, so if they had an Ancestry.com to figure out who you know, yeah, maybe they could have all the DNA from all the crim crimes that are unsolved up there, and you just submit your stuff, and then you're either in or out. So why would you want to do that? Because well, if you, you did could, a crime, you don't want anyone to know. You could establish freedom, <laughs> or that you're non-guilty. Eliminate yourself. You could eliminate yourself yeah, as a suspect. That's actually, that's it's a pretty good idea. Let's talk about, you know, the let's swing the pendulum the okay, other Okay, the way, other right? way. So what's have, the down, we talked about the profiling part. Right, you could, you could do pre-birth genetic testing of, yeah. of embryonic material to see if your child has the evil so gene. So tell us about the Nazis, because they didn't have DNA, but they, no. they are a good example of what where this could go. Right, and I think... If you look at uh, Hitler's right-wing agenda, uh, he just wanted a common enemy. And by building a profile of a common enemy, he also created the, the common good people. And sure. he labeled them Aryan. And he right. said Aryans have this characteristic. And yeah. then he built this profile of the Aryan race and, and even fought a false history of the Aryan race. And, uh, and that's how some of the symbolism you see in the, uh, the Nazi empire came about. But uh, he said you got to have you know blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin, and you got to have good lineage with. And no. did they have birth certificates, birth yeah, you records gotta, of your family? And were they three, four generations back? German actually. is that that was, was you had to, German, you could, Austrian. You, German. Uh, oh, you could you could add Swiss to that, Norwegian, uh, Danish. So there were know. a few that were okay, but if you were outside of that, or you had other birth, what do you call it, um, birth records? Right. You, know, so you couldn't throw Poland into there. You, you couldn't uh, throw, uh, throw in uh, anything in Northern Africa, you know, especially not people uh, of color of any kind. It uh, had to be. Because they weren't. The it's a Northern one. European profile, basically, right? And so, and, and so everybody else was excluded. You couldn't hold office. You couldn't uh, hold an official and then, position. And then he sold that to his people, the country, and got them believing. That's right. And then they started kicking Con the people The out. common enemy profile is a... Is a long-standing uh, uh, tradition being used by many dictators over millennia. Wow. You know, we have a common enemy. Now, I, we can go all the way back to Rome. Rome had Carthage, which was their bitter enemy. No matter what Carthage did, Rome kept its empire going because it was always death to Carthage. You know, and Carthage was the same way, death to Rome, right? Until Rome right, wiped out Carthage. Yeah. And, and so in it's this, been just in lather, our, rinse, repeat. It's like shampoo through history. So in our DNA model, what we're worried about today is well, you if we were to anything. profile. What if we, if we profiled all the DNA and said everybody who has Neanderthal ancestry still left in them is lesser? You can't, you can't be a professor. You can't work for NASA. You can't hold office. You're, you're a lesser citizen because we don't think you'll ever achieve a, an IQ worthy of Or what if just you're going, to be, you're going to be too expensive, uh, your health model, what if you're going to be too expensive to support your life? 
Right. So you can't have government-supported health care. You have to get your own. You can't have a life. Or they just eliminate you. Right. Or there's an isolated That's place That's, again, where they send back to, like, if you don't have blue eyes, if you don't, you know, or whatever. Like, Same thing. Crazy, yeah. right? And eventually, you know, the, of course, we all know so, Hitler's final so, solution was the burn of him. And, all of them. and now, how many, do you know how many people are in these My 23 and Me's and Answer as Herb? How many people are in there? I don't know what their populations are. They're, oh, they're big. They're in the millions. No. They cover the globe. They do. They're global. Yeah. I will tell you this about 23 and Me. I participated in this. I found out there's a lot of my lineage. My wife, who was of Japanese ancestry, has mostly Okinawan. Awesome. But when she did 23 and Me, she just identified as Japanese. Oh, she so, thought she was Okinawan. Or she does have some, but she's mostly Okinawan. What we think it is is 23 and Me does not have yet a, uh, a large enough population sample of size. sample size of uh, Asia. Gotcha. So they can't differentiate Korean, Japanese, Very Northern well. Korean. No, so it's not as discreet. Not as discreet. Whereas with the European profiles, I came out Ashkenazi Jew, uh, Asian, uh, what else was I? Native American, uh, Latino. Poi dog, you. Yeah, uh, poi dog. And Irish, of course, a lot of Irish. So right? that's good. So. Yeah. So how do we know then that this profile, this guy? Well, we already we got the match. So yeah. may so that's an interesting thing. So if sample size is could be an issue. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then for them to have used that as publicly available evidentiary data to go get their subpoena, maybe their grounds for subpoena could be argued against. I can see that argument coming up and seeing it get shot down rather quick. Yeah. You know, because oh, what you're looking for when you're gathering evidence and getting a warrant is the maybes. Yeah. This, this is possible. The judge says, yeah, I think there's a possibility here. This is enough to get a warrant. And, right. that, and you don't have to be spot on, but you've got to be in the general region of, of your topic. Yeah, I'm sure they had other, other things by then. So, so but, but given, had they been looking for perhaps a um, Okinawan person. Right. They and might then, have missed. And then used your the database where your wife was at, and, and they could have missed her because she shows up as Japanese. Right. In right. their database. So in their database. That sample size is kind of like the error thing we talked about, that false, the falseness or the, the other side of using that data um, in a negative way is that the data may not be complete yet, which is kind of back to some of the science problems with science I was talking about. So I think we, so got, that's interesting. we got two concerns here. I think yeah. this is, we got we to make sure that the science is sound. And that we keep reviewing it. Peer-reviewed journals mm -hmm. repeat the science so we get the same results in the same experiment. So we prove that the science is true. We've got to do that. I think they, they in this case, they got it on the, I think these matches those people. But I it's the so. how did they get to going, the subpoena, because they have to get a warrant to go to surveil him and pick up his DNA. Yeah. So it's the, was that evidence sound enough? And probably it wasn't all based on the. Ancestry. I would imagine forty-year case. They got a lot of evidence, and they to go found on, right? some of where he was yeah. and his, you know. This might have been anecdotal to the other evidence, and just was enough to tip him over the fulcrum and convince the judge. Okay, now, yeah, forty years plus this. Okay, now I think this is enough to go searching. Right? Interesting. And let's go get Interesting. some. Interesting. The other thing I think we got to watch is intent. You know, we're putting all this data out there. Mm. We're feeding all these databases with all our most precious information. So whoever uses that information, I think there needs to be some oversight somewhere to manage intent. Yeah. Thanks. What do you intend like to do Facebook. with that data? <laughs> no one managed that, and I'm 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 sick to death of, well, of they... you know, people not realizing that when you sign up for a free service on the web, it's not free. You're the product. Well, and the data scientist who advise Cambridge Analytica what could be done. I mean, th this is like the same guy that advised these cops that, hey, maybe if you go look through Ancestry, you might be able to, some, yeah. there's, as as we are getting a, um, what do you call them, just, I want to say, yes, younger people engaged in these trades, police investigation, um, oh, yeah, forensics? political, political, political uh, lobbying, yeah. whatever it might be. They're coming up with some unique ways to, to use this data that just people maybe hadn't thought about yet. These young people have grown up with this ubiquitous model of computer and data on their, entire, on their whole life in games. And we didn't grow up with that. Yeah, we don't you think know. that way. The biggest technology we had in my house before I moved out, I think we got a microwave. Yeah. I mean, and were you afraid of it? Uh, well, after I read the hamster thing, that urban myth, I just... Uh. I just wouldn't touch it, but you know, I got over that. But that was the biggest technology we had. And, you know, when, when I raised my kids, they had laptops. Yeah. 
You know, that, that is an amazing technological leap in mm -hmm. just about 20 years. And now in the next 20 years, it's going to be even greater. And now we've, we're building this genetic database. database yeah. and, and law enforcement's got one yep. for criminals, sure. right? And yeah, someday they're going to start cross-referencing the criminals with the, with the, with the other the, samples. The other samples. I'm wondering, well, I mean, an AI will probably be able to do it really quickly, actually. You know, imagine imagine some, deep, some deep learning that will be right. available for probably fixing old crimes that are unsolved and matching those up and stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, hopefully we'll get to this evidentiary level with that type of science that it will deter crime. That's what you would hope. I would now, hope. Will it? I yeah. don't know because if... If we listen to our distinguished producer who was whispering in our ear about people's <laughs> predisposition with their DNA, like it might be that you're going to just be a crook anyway, but maybe we'll catch you sooner. Like now, this, this guy, an interesting you one. know, we can catch you sooner. Yeah, maybe, you know, so, and that, that would be helpful, right? Obviously. So you'd, we, you'd be in the pool of usual suspects if the yeah. crime got committed and you were in the area. Hey, we, you got that genetic marker. Because we know you had that bump on your We head. should go ask Jason what he was doing on there. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know, I can get that. I just don't want the genetic material, the gen genetic profile uh, to be used against us, to cost us more money, mm -hmm. to make us part of society that we don't want to be part of. Well, you've got to think, too. Think about how slowly things like legislation and law move. This was pretty compared fast. Compared to technology. A bill last year yeah. based on genetic material, people could charge us more for medical insurance. Right. So we're at that point. Right, well, they're, well, they're at least introducing, like, but it didn't pass. So, I mean, it like, didn't but, pass, but, it's, but we're and, and the DNA it. stuff's been around since for 20 years. Right. So right. I mean, so this it, is going to come around. That's again. how slow that. That's how slowly the courts and all that are moving compared to the technology. Gosh, I hope you're right. I, well, I, I mean, can we, see this happening in our lifetime. Oh, I would think so. I can see this. Yeah. So, so do you think? Well, let me ask you a question. It will be on the record. Do you think we'll be? more for good or more for bad or, or what do you think I'm happen? a positive guy I think it's more for good yeah I think there will be some bad though for instance like we're getting older for healthcare we're getting older what if our genetic profile says you're gonna have very bad health after age 90 well then they'll have that member of the soil and green and everybody's <laughs> got to do a turn on the carousel <laughs> assignment everybody go out there and watch the movie Soylent Green yeah you get your with a, with your a, turn on the carousel was that Edward G Robinson and it was, uh, uh, Charlton, Charlton Heston. Heston yeah yeah you gotta watch that movie or at least well, you know I mean that was the old fashioned read the book the idea I, you know right I mean it's using it's, people for food <laughs> well but, I mean that's what that was about but it was that you you had your time you you lived your life and then you did your turn on the carousel at age 35 so that genetic like that. marker might say oh you're 90 yeah you, you got to get on the carousel this, this at 89 yeah let's let's uh what did they call it in the movie going home yeah going yeah, home I want to go yeah. home and yeah that 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 would frighten me oh. um see so in in my family people live well into their 90s Oh, so you're I mean, it's hard to kill to us it. off. It really is. But you already gave up your DNA. I already gave them my DNA. Maybe I don't have that marker <laughs> that says I'm going to live that long. And someone says, you know, you, know what, you can live babe. that long, but we're not going to give you medical care. Yeah, like we're not going to take care of you because yeah. you're too expensive. That's right. That That's scary. That could be bad. Okay, we're going to have to wrap things up. Hey, you want to give yourself one last plug before we go for Security Matters next Friday? Security Matters next Friday, 10 a.m. Um, next Friday, I'll actually be at the NSA Change of Command, so we may not have an episode. But oh, I'll already? be back on Friday after that. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to be watching your show. and uh, Maybe you can go run it next week. <laughs> let me know. There you go. Okay. Okay, everybody, join us next week, and we'll have a topic. Hopefully, we'll be doing something like cyber law, which is coming up. And uh, if I can get that guest, that'd be great. If not, we'll do something interesting, and we'll scare the little whole living crap out of you with more cybersecurity. Until then, stay safe. <laughs>